Hello and welcome to the DM's Travel Book Club, A Guide to the Planes. Each episode we explore one of the planes of existence as outlined in the great wheel cosmology in the role-playing game Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, my name is Fiona and with me as always is my co-host Hamilton. Hello Hamilton, how are you doing? Hello Fiona, how are you? I'm, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I, as oh, we, I'm, I didn't answer very, your question. Oh, we're very British. <laughs> that's, that's all you need to know about this show is that we're very British and we're too polite to actually tell each other how we're feeling. So. Yeah. So how are you? You go first. Oh, I, you know what? I'm feeling incredibly neutral about things. Just very, like, sort of in the centre, done. How about yourself? Surprising that, isn't it? Yes. So am I. I'm feeling very middling. Very middling. Well, that not that convenient because next stop on our huge sort of, uh, you know, exploring ex- sort of journey around the cosmology. Our gap year. All, our gap year, yes, is... We're stopping off at the ultimate plane of law. Yeah, we are stopping off at Mechanus. This amazing sort of unfeeling order. That's what I've got down mm. here as a sort of thing. So, so Hamilton, what do you think? When I say the word Mechanus to you, what sort of images come up? Even though I know you've read the small book as well. But, yes. But what, what but sort it, of it, it, Instantly it's gears, obviously. And instantly hence the gears. backgrounds that we've got here. It's lots of gears moving. And I think that's just... That is a standard. Um, standard. And then Modrons. <laughs> and Modrons, yes. If you've listened to a very recent DMs book club, yes, we've, t- we've sort of discussed Modrons as sort of uh, beings that embody ultimate law who sort of live on this plane. So mm. we'll come to those, those little guys. We mention guys them in quite second. a lot in DMs book club generally because we do love them. <sighs> we do love them. I, I love it. We'll, we'll try not to talk about them too much. We are going to yes. focus on the plane itself, but they are, mm. it's hard to talk about Mechanus without mentioning Modrons and Primus mm. as well, so the deity yeah. that runs this place. So, yes. Yeah. So, Fiona. That's me. Yeah. yeah. You're leading this this the charge I for Mechanus am. today. So, tell me tell me about the geography of Mechanus then. The geography of Mechanus. So, I want Is you to it think... rolling hills like Arcadia? Oh. Is it tunnels like Pandemonium? No. <laughs> Nothing no. like that at all. <laughs> uh, it, as you sort of described it, it's sort of uh, if you can imagine just a huge, it's sort of the interior of a clock, these ideas of sort of spinning gears and cogs sort of going around in very slow sort of tick-tocking fashion, essentially. So it's sort of one of the defining features of mechanisms is that it's predictable as the drip of a water clock. It's the idea that things are still moving slowly and they are sort of shifting and changing into new variations. I think a lot of people think that ultimate law means everything is stop still and everything is uh, motionless and just sort of like it is static. Whereas here in Mechanus, you have just such a huge collection of sort of gears, go- uh, cogs, pulleys, just linking everything together. There's always like constant movement. It's full of life and as a result, because everything's still mo- moving forward, it's just sort of moving things forward, getting to a point. It, it, I mean, there are some theories that talk about these cogs being sort of the things that move the full multiverse. And so should one of them break, should a cog be taken away, the whole multi- multiverse will just be stopped. And just that would be just be the end of everything. Not which good. is Not great. <laughs> not great. I, you know, you've seen that what happens to your grandfather's box. They sort of break and then you chuck them out into the into the heap and that's it. You never, you never see... You, you know, how can you repair time if a huge mm. like cog is gone? So yeah, so this idea that we are sort of moving forward because it's sort of furthering the causes of law and order. If, it, if in doubt, think law and order, think modrons, think... Like uh, any sort of police, like, again, they are sort of the, the sort of the offices of law, and anything that happens, they're going to put down the law essentially. No, exactly, and I think um, I think the additional thing to note that we we've mentioned that it's law, but it's also the neutrality of it, as we were mm. saying, is that this is there is no leaning towards good or evil, no. which is interesting in that law. So it is law that is outside of any of those sorts of other categories of alignment whilst where we were last week in arcadia it was law Mm. good neutral (laughs) and we've been to and we will go to law good good which is next week so there's just sort of it and then obviously we'll hit some other evil ones but i think it's just Mm. worth mentioning that so it's just pure law yes completely yeah it, law law and order comes before anything else which yeah is the exactly key thing to think of. other things to sort of mention sort of like sort of defining features i would say we've got uh there's no sort of star sun or moon at all there's no. some of the gears actually are the ones that sort of share this sort of bright light uh the sky is black 
So you can imagine just like this almost like like I said, like the sort of interior of a clock or a, or yeah, a, yeah just just like, it's just darkness and these gears just sort of slowly turning in space. Uh, speaking of, the air is breathable to every being, including mm. underwater creatures. So for what if for whatever reason you have, I don't know, a star whale just suddenly appear, it will be okay. It's not going to just flop on the ground and get and gum up one of the gears as it slowly turns yeah. into its death. I don't know why I said that out loud. <laughs> it's just become so graphic. Oh, yes. so- Oh no! Well, be, so, be yeah, assured. Churned into oblivion. Well, be assured and... that the Modrons will clean that up. So <laughs> yes, of course, they, that's what they're there for. Um, yeah, it was. A, there's an interesting piece of this book that it says about going to. Mo- it says one of the few places that the clueless being planars and people that have uh, primes and stuff, people who aren't from the planes, mm. don't long to go, except perhaps the sightseers. Yes. And I think that's kind of that's kind of what it comes to. And I think even even reading it, I find it very. I still find it very interesting. Mm. But it does feel very sightsee unless you really want to get involved in law mm. and understanding laws or trying to understand the real functioning of of what what the what the the chant is of of the of the place because other than that it's it doesn't have the same sort of exploration I feel of some of the other ones but I don't know if you agree with that compared to the other planes that we visited where it'd be like oh we're going to explore some unseen land or we're going to mm. find some treasure and stuff here in Macarnas it is definitely um it's definitely like if you go here you have to have a reason and you have yeah. for example to get into the plane itself there is a lot of paperwork you have to fill it all mm. in you have to queue up you have to get your permit or something like that yeah. and then the guards will then choose where you go if you you might want to be like i want to go to this pu- this particular cog at this time they might go hold up Mm. Mm. according to this paperwork you're more suited to go to this other place so exactly. I think it's, it's incredibly frustrating if anything one of my favourite bits and sort of comparisons I would give us to is like obviously I'm sure we've all had admin to deal with <laughs> we've all had we've all been in those organisations where you're like I just want to get this one thing and you speak to someone and then months later you get the permit after long after you've solved the problem by doing it yourself without anyone knowing um, but also if you think of um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy the Vogons this idea mm. that everything has to have you know be uh, stamped and signed and triplicated and that sort of thing. So yeah, as a result, this feels like this big sort of barrier going. Oh god, there's just such a lot of effort to get in there. There must, you know, you must want to entice your party or your players into doing this. And I think you can do it because there yeah. is places on Mechanus that don't have this sort of uh, this like everyone being so neutral. They, there's a place called Haven, which is a sort of safe place where you can be chaotic you know within reason yeah. you know it, it is okay for you to go there so maybe yeah. that would be where you stay over there's also other sort of realms so i'm sure we'll talk about my city very very briefly if you want yeah. to sort of go there and explore sort of uh the myconid kingdom down there as well um but i guess what am i trying to say here i think i i think for me i'd love to go maybe it's because you want to meet or maybe you're returning something mm. to Mercanus. Yeah, you know, that, I, think that's, I think my point was more that it's like, it's just like you, I did, I, it's hard to put into exact words, but I mm-hmm. think the point was it's like, you you feel like there's a, going to there feels like going to the council. Like you go when you yes. need to do something and you go through all this stuff to get to a place that you need to go to, to do a mm. particular task, Absolutely. which might be like understanding a law, trying to break a law and yep. trying to learn how to break a law or, uh, wanting to use some fun things that we'll talk about later, like the orrery or something like that. Yes. But it's not like, let's just go to to battle because that just sounds freaking crazy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, or or let's go to pandemonium because like w- we need to, we want to go find some awesome treasures in that third layer, mm-hmm. or you know, or Mount Celestia. We need to go see one of these gods, which we'll talk mm-hmm. about like later, or Asgard because that sounds you know people might enjoy that sort of like storyline but it, it mechanist it, it feels like unless you just want to as i said the sightseeing thing it feels more like a let's go and have a let's go meet some modrons because that would be fun yeah and uh let's go break a law or two or so, let's learn how to break a law but that's I guess, kind of my, well, I, I, my feeling t- for it i guess yeah thinking of that because obviously there is the fortress of disciplined enlightenment mm. which is where the governor's from mm. uh, sort of that faction from Sigil sort of are there. That's like a big law library in itself. So maybe you need to go mm. do some research, for example. You maybe yeah. need to find some things. Also grants licenses for you to hunt outlaws as well. And I think maybe that's the big thing is that maybe you 
get a lot of money as oh there's big big contracts to find rogue mm. uh, people who have broken laws on the Carnus. So then maybe that is the more drive. Like it is not necessarily yeah. a, it's you know it is returning these sort of your bounties to Macarnus so that they can be judged by. Uh, these different mm. sort of courts and stuff like that. So maybe maybe that's it as well because they do talk about these different sort of uh, patrols, uh, which I can't have to hand. Oh uh, yeah, there's like various types of lawgivers. So maybe you're going to yeah. be part of those one of those sort of teams. They've got the the Modrons, uh, which are obviously the natural sort of beings that live on Macarnus. Got the governors, you've got the vigilants, and you've got the mercy killers as well. So maybe yeah. you're part of one of those factions, or maybe you're trying to like cut off one of those factions to get. The bounty before them perhaps so maybe that little sort of in-party yeah. tension as well no it does sound cool it just it's yeah i think it's the other things like um i guess like i think as well like gehenna or something like that you might even just stay in one of those places for longer but this feels like a whistle stop tour sort of and, place. I, but, and you yeah. know what i don't think that's a problem i think no i, I don't I, think it's I, at I, all I, i'm not yeah. saying that's negative no. i'm just saying it's particular to the yeah. i mean maybe that's one of the things it's like like the, i think that's the reason i love it so much is that mm. it's just one of those things where you can do so much of it but maybe it's only fleeting glances mm. of this place because like you said it's not an ideal place for any party i think no matter yeah. how neutral they may feel they are <laughs> yeah Cause, exactly because let's let's talk about let's talk about sort of the yes. the population and stuff of it those inhabitants that do live in Makarnas, so, uh, whether they're sort of Modrons or whether they're just they've come from other planes and decided to live here, what's great about them? I think that this and this is great for a DM is that everyone is frighteningly honest about things and exceeding exceedingly literal. Mm -hmm. Mm. And so th that's the again that idea because they don't wish to t misinterpret anything you say because yeah. that invites chaos. Exactly. So this idea that if you ask someone to to get you something, they might be like, not they might not take instruction from you because it's it, what you've said is just up for interpretation, or even mm. just like completely ignore you because oh yeah. no you're too chaotic. You're gonna <laughs> get you're, you're gonna get caught out with your could you get me something and they would mm. say well yes. And you're like, <laughs> yes. will you please go and get me something? You have, you know, you have those classic, you know, you have to um, break it down. Particularities of rule, which, unlike in other lawful places where those are going to trip you up in a dangerous way, they will just literally just ignore you or be very literal back. Whilst in battle or in the Feywild, mm -hmm. those things will come back to bite you a, a lot yeah. harder. But um. Yeah, I did like that. That yeah, they're so afraid of misinterpreting command, as I said to you, because of vague reason and language that they simply do not take instruction. Yeah. So, yeah. And on top and, of that, as well, mm. is that if there is a crime that's committed, so and it's not your party necessarily, instead of apprehending those those people, they will instead go and report it to a higher authority. <laughs> So I love this idea that they they know when it's all been broken, but they're like, but I don't want to get involved in case then I too also break a law. Yeah, exactly. So I will go report it, and th so they'll either go report it or, and this this is the thing I really do Bloody love. grasses. The, yeah, they know they call, either grass it up or they'll be like, hey you, you just broke a law, and then continue to follow that person. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like, could you imagine that? Yeah, this person is like I, I always a think of the example. Yeah. I always think of the example of like um, you know you've shut gone up, into the bathroom, <laughs> you've gone into the bathroom to like change your t-shirt or something like that, and someone going going, hey, you didn't wash your hands. Oh no, I was changing your t-shirt. No, excuse me, this person's not washed their hands. Oh, They've yeah. not washed their hands. They've not washed their hands. <laughs> and you're just following them around saying, this person, don't shake their hand. <laughs> they, they, they've not washed their hands. I feel like you've met someone who's done this to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, a friend of a friend. No, but, I, <laughs> but that's the example I can think of is where you, yeah. you could just suddenly get a whole group of like people just pointing at you going, that they've they've done a crime. Excuse me. I was you know what it's you're now making me think of is that scene at the end of uh, not uh, not Notting Hill, um, Love Actually, where he's going to marry. He's going to go marry. The, he wants to go and engage, and so they all come along and they go, "What's happening?" And the whole family and then the whole <laughs> city, like village, come and follow him to going to go propose. Yes, yeah, Colin Firth's character. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's really cool. Oh, that's that's great. I I love that. But. So yeah, other than that, who, who else is there? There's the Fraternity of Order you mentioned, so mm, the governors. Yes. So the governors, um, yeah. So you, you know a little bit more about the governors than I do in this, but I thought I'd talk briefly about the sort of mathematicians. Mm. So this is, and this is actually quite interesting because they have a, their own little special page within Macarnas' mm. book as well. Like, I've not read about them before, but there's this idea that... Well, let's, let's start at the top. So there is a theory that 
Mechanus is very similar in some uh, in some teeny teeny tiny way to Limbo. We've discussed Limbo a couple of episodes ago, mm. where you as a person on Limbo could will something into existence. You imagine it, and it would appear in sort of mm. you know, great detail and, and thing. And the same thing theoretically can happen in Mechanus, because this idea that this is the perfect place of law and and order. So if you imagine something. Like it's it makes if it if it's logical for you to you know imagine it then it must be true and therefore yeah. it must exist on Macarnus somewhere. So yeah. this idea that I could be like I can imagine this beautiful necklace made out of uh, different coloured gems and it just says Fiona is amazing it, like in mm. great big like Comic Sans font uh, across across the neckline. Why would you do it in Comic Sans? Why not? Because I so I can imagine it therefore. Somewhere on Macarnas, on one of the cogs, <laughs> there must be a little case that says to Fiona on it and have this necklace in. Yeah. So the mathematicians, they are devoted to find whether this is true or not. Mm. Um, because that people have obviously to do this in Lim compared to Limbo, where it's like you imagine it and it happens. You now it's, it's the idea that you can imagine it anywhere in the multiplayer, but then you have to travel to Mechanus, travel to where you think the cog is and everything like that. Yeah. And even then, it could be, it could, it might not be exactly what you thought of, because mm. again, it, your thoughts could be up for uh, misinterpretation. So it gives the yeah. example of you thinking of like a, a field of beautiful, like perfect grass, and you might just find one teeny like blade of grass in between two sort of cogs, the, the yeah. teeth of the cogs, as it's yeah, so your thought of like m millions of treasures might just mean you feel, you sense a piece of gold, like one piece of gold, like floating mm -hmm. in space. And I think it's kind of interesting because it goes with that theory that that there's that idea isn't it that air, as we are beings of creation and our brains are being of creation everything that we can think of as human beings mm. must be available for creation because mm. we are only limited we are we are limited by the, the creation the universe that we're within and yeah. if we could never think of anything outside of that universe therefore if we believe that you could run at the speed of light then it must physically be possible at some point in time however in order to get there it doesn't mean that you can just do that because <laughs> yeah. you think it it's just that because you think it there is a possibility of it happening that's i can i can just see now these all these that is that uh, meme of diagrams and notes yeah. coming out of your head like all these things happening because yeah it's because yeah. it's a big philosophy right because mm. obviously you know and i think maybe it's a little bit too much maybe for your players because they might go what of course that doesn't that's not real but this mm. but this sort of philosophy is then embedded into the mathematicians so they believe that mm. you know anything can be imagined it will exist in mechanics and so they will look for a way to find it and yeah you can become one of these uh, mathematicians you but you have to be of a certain level and have a certain intelligence score in order to understand these amazingly high concepts yes exactly <laughs> which i quite like yeah, yeah. Um, but and the sort of only little downside, or not even downside, but one thing I did thought was quite nice was that you must share any findings that you find with your mm. brethren, but brethren even. Mm. I can't even say that word. But uh, but again, that's a really cool story hook. Maybe you have been uh, one of your party, or maybe someone that's close to the party has sort of enlisted them to come and help them find some treasure for the mathematicians. But then you've got to take on a couple of um, uh, you know of NPCs, and they're just all there willing to talk to you about this and have these interesting conversations. You're like you. You're just like, no, you're just saying. No idea what you're saying. It's, it's yeah. You can imagine the the, the lesser intelligent, you know, uh, barbarians or rogues mm. or, or, or whoever, you know, anyone that doesn't. You'd be like, God, you're talking way too much. Yeah. Like, what are you <laughs> talking about? Because uh, and that could make some really cool. A bit like, like you're standing there in front of the architect from the Matrix Three. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, wait, That's what? Like <laughs> just, just this, this is version seven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, I think yeah. the thing that is kind of I th just thought of a, a good adventure that could go with it is that the classic trope of like there's a big godlike being that's trying to destroy the world and you need to find the god slaying weapon and then you realize there is no such god slaying weapon mm -hmm. and everyone's like assuming there's everyone believes that there's possibly this like the god killer sword or something like that but there never is the god killer sword and they're like oh there never no one ever existed and they're like oh so what we're gonna do, and then they go and they go. Well, let's go to Macar. Like someone finds out this idea that if we go to Macarnas and think very hard about it, we might be able to will it into being or something like that. Yeah, be, a, and because that, that feels like a, such a, a a really desperate one last try. Yeah, exactly. And so instantly, I wanted to be at one last try, and it works. But it's yes. something so silly, like you think, yeah, like it's a like you know. 
a dragon slaying sword and it actually yeah. is like you know a teeny tiny like dagger or like yes. a dessert spoon or something like that a dessert spoon like, you're like what the heck and you try it and then it actually works works so, but... they're like no yeah. my weakness <laughs> a dessert spoon <laughs> <laughs> anyway, before we go to any other sort of populations, mm. we, it would be remiss of us not to talk briefly about Motrons. Mm. So this idea that these are sort of um, perfect, uh, geometric and sort of numeratic, that's not even a word, but these sort of, these shaped creatures essentially mm. that have been created this, and they're sort of made in this huge sort of like a hierarchy, incredible hive mind, that sort of thing. And mm. according to this book, although I will say in all, there's many different uh, versions of them in across all the editions. There are 15 divisions of Modrons, with mm. Primus, their sort of deity, being at the top. And the idea yep. is that you know, if uh, this sort of duties get filtered down from Primus for doing certain things, whether it is mm. ruling over a region of one of the cogs to even just cleaning the teeth of the cogs. Um, mm from one to another and it's sort of carried out in a sort of like again oh i will delegate this to you thank you very much i will now delegate this to you and so on and so forth there is mm. no sense of self it is always mm. we the modrons we're doing this and mm. something that we picked up in our modron episode which i quite like this idea that if you are speaking to a modron because they have no sense of self or no sort of like concept of it and there's a group of part there's a party they will speak to the person they think is in charge but if somebody else asks them a question they will still direct their answer to the person they think is in charge which i think mm. is amazing because then you're just completely ignoring <laughs> yeah. all of the party and speaking to the one that speaks for everyone what's quite fun is you could do that to a party and just sort of make them roll for like charisma to see who they then sort of is the person or something yeah. like that or even just you could sort of mess with them just make someone you think is the party leader or whatever uh, exactly mm. um the, the other cool well the other thing to note about them is that they can only communicate modules can only communicate with the level above and below them so for example yeah. the lowest level the monodrones they can only communicate with the duodrones which is above them yeah. because they can that's what they can comprehend the duodrones yeah. can co sort of communicate with the monodrones and the triodrones which are above them as well but yeah. this and this was interesting and in, compared to in this edition it says that the further up a modron goes they do remember where they were previously yes. in fifth edition they it don't it says they don't yeah that's what i thought i prefer the old edition idea that they remember it, but they state that they can't communicate with one lower because they are way too advanced to communication that the ones two steps below them wouldn't be able to understand them. Yeah. So they just can't communicate below because they cannot distill can't, their information. Can't back. even function. Yeah, I, yeah, it is almost like a kindness in a way, saying mm. I will pass this on because I'm just going to put it in layman's terms for you mm. to pass it and on. And then you'll yeah. layman's it down even more, sort of thing. Exactly. Which, yeah. So, so yeah, so again, what this advice to as well, they are, I will say, all 15 divisions of Modrons are listed. They're not all not all given stats to play that, mm. because I think to, the, to a point it's like, it's going to be very hard to, to fight them as well. But you can easily add more Modrons in if you think of really cool shapes or get all different numbers and stuff, you can easily do that as a DM, which I think will be quite cool. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is there's a very interesting comparison here from Modrons to... Um, I think it's, it's devils and demons essentially because yeah. yeah. devils and devils and demons you know where you stand with them it says it says like you understand that mm. they hate you that you know they're evil and they're going to use you for their own goods essentially whether it's yeah. sort of like through contracts or whether there's pure chaos and they're just out to fight you you never know where you stand with a, a, a modron because they don't care about good or evil they just care about law and order and even though that law and order might not be in, might be invisible to mm. the human eye so i love the idea that you were just always slightly on edge <laughs> and they yeah. are sort of very unnerving because you could say something they go hmm does not compute okay and then and then they was make their own mind up and go nope we will take you and you will be tried come with yeah. us <laughs> and you're like yes. what oh no you 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 jaywalked you you said a naughty word uh you were clearly yeah. evil or you clearly you clearly broken the law the, the characters that you see, there are, I can't think of the term in a movie, but there are characters like that where it's appearing that they're your friend, but then you realise they're like an alien structure where they are, I think it's mainly in like Star Trek, and then they conform to a, a higher theory and then suddenly they're like, well, you broke the law, that's it, you're dead, sort of thing. Reminds me of that episode where Wesley in Star Trek Next Generation breaks the, <laughs> where they have that place with the law, called, yes. I think it's called Judgment and the episode, mm -hmm. and he falls into a greenhouse and they have this idea that if you're in the 
you can do, there's a place where you can it's the place where there are no laws apart from one area that roams around the mm. world and if you're in the ultimate law area you're killed if you break any law and yeah. uh, and it's a whole it's a completely stupid theory but there's a really good scene with like a couple mm. of good scenes of like arguments but it just reminds me of that sort of like oh it's all seemingly fine and then you do something very innocuous and you're like no you're going to die now yes <laughs> and everyone's and yeah, fine it's, with it's it around you and you're like what mm. the fuck that's ridiculous and they're like yeah, no, no, that's how it works here, sort of thing. Like, yeah, wow. absolutely. And and this idea that the trials and stuff that they will they will take you to trial. You know, as any mm. lawbreaker, they will take the trial in regular, sort of the main sort of Modron mm. sort of layer, their realm, and they'll try you because they'll have evidence. They'll they'll have evidence, and they'll even people will come and testify against you, even if you know they'll be like, oh yes, I did see them here at this time. Well, that confirms that they were there when the law was broken. You know, and it just sort of yeah. mounts up against you, and you're like, hang on, that means nothing. So no, no, no. You know, and it's just again the sneaky way that these people will just again like dogpile your players with like paperwork yeah. and evidence yeah. that stacks against you which is all circumstantial it doesn't actually so prove Brazil. anything it's all the Brazil stuff yeah. yes yeah. Exactly. yeah yeah it's a hundred percent it is Brazil a hundred percent the final that's the movie final... not the country just to clarify <laughs> just to absolutely yes clarify <laughs> and it's a great movie would recommend uh, awesome. the final thing I want to say on Modrons is that mm. this thing about when they die their life yeah. force is sort of reabsorbed back into uh, Mechanus, and another Modron is promoted up the train. So, for example, a Triodrone, uh, if that is killed in battle or it just fades away, it it just, in my head, it sort of rusts and just falls down, but there's nothing mm. left of them. And then somewhere, whether it's on the plane of Mechanus or elsewhere in the multiverse, a Duodron will transform and, and become a Triodrone. Mm. And similarly, a, a Monodrone will then go up to be a a, a duo drone and a, another mo uh, monodrone will appear from somewhere. Exactly. Now, it, yeah. it, it again, it's that sort of the idea of promoting stuff. There's no sort of like it's going to be the person closest to us. It's going to be this particular person. No, it's already preordained, isn't it? Exactly. Based on their existence, isn't it? Just they're literally the last one to have been born. So if you're the yeah, yeah. that's it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, and um... it's 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 so cool and. Yeah, I just again, it's just a very interest. I think for me, because again, they they look they're a cool way, to, cool creature to describe to players as well. And you could easily go in, like I said, if you're creating other modrons, you can really just go ham and be like, cool, it's like a Mobius strip kind of one, or it's a, yeah. an Escher sort of staircase type one, or anything like that. And it's just again, as I've always said on this sort of show, that sometimes I'm like I'm overwhelmed by the description, but I'm like that sounds really cool. I just cannot imagine it. So this, I, yeah, I want definitely three D or sort of like mm. uh, illusionary sort of modrons where you're not entirely sure how they work, because uh, that would be quite cool. And yeah, I just I just there's something an very interesting sort of NPC to play, but also maybe a really cool sort of like information point, you know, to mm. give some sort of, you know guidance or law or even yeah. I think there's a what is it in Regulus there you. Know, to make sure you you know you know what's going on, so if they can give you that's right, a three hundred volume portable law summary that can be found at any of the bureaus. So <laughs> I like the idea that they hand out, I don't know, carts or, or you know it's like Hitchhiker's Guide, isn't it? But I just like the idea that oh we still got them in hardback, <laughs> and it's just three hundred volumes of of laws that you could just take around with you. I think that's fantastic though. Come on, I mean they you think they'd invented the iPad by now, but yeah, it's fine. We'll have to do. Oh no no no! Because what what if it gets hacked or something like that? <laughs> yeah, or... well, that's very true. Uh, and is it true. worth mentioning rogue modrons or is it worth just like? Yeah, let's talk about rogue mo modrons. Yeah. So sometimes um, change happens uh, mm. as as with all life, like things happen and mutate or something, and it gets to a point where a modron might suddenly remember or might suddenly start thinking in, as an individual rather than a team or a hive. And so as a result, they might they might start breaking laws themselves it, because this idea of individuality mm. is so sort of alien to the Modrons and it is chaotic, right? Because as soon as you break away and you start thinking for yourself, that it goes against what they've sort of preordained, as you said, so mm. sort of predetermined stuff. So they will send out bounty hunters and, and patrols of Modrons to hunt down rogue Modrons. But what I quite mm. liked is that individual modrons when they break away they can easily draw other modrons underneath them because they are seen as like ah oh, someone that is higher than us that's telling us what to do they just have to manipulate it in a certain way so you could have a whole rogue modron like like army, army or, or, squad, or at least yeah or squad or even like a a um maybe even like a a, a gang of modron thieves that's like mm. under one sort of uh, 
<laughs> Modron Mob Boss. Oh my gosh, <laughs> now you've made it. Yes. <laughs> because obviously for them, it'll make total sense. Because yes, we're acting within the law of the Mob Boss, you know, on the day of my Modron's wedding. You know, that's <laughs> I was trying to think of like, leave the gears, take the cannoli. <laughs> oh, <laughs> He's, he's sleeping with the cogs. <laughs> anyway, but yes, you, there's, as you can tell, there's a lot of fun you can or have. Or sleeping with the Mykonids would be more like... Oh, very good. Come on. Very good. There you go. There you go. There you go. Now, now we have the mod, the Modron mod boss, <laughs> mod boss. versus, yeah. versus the the, mod uh, Mykonid. <laughs> <laughs> the Mykonids of Mycelia, yes. Yeah. And let's let's quickly talk about Mycelia, because again, we're not going to talk about it too much, because well, because I know you find it a little bit silly, but just to give it a little bit of context, oh, I don't. You we can got... talk about it. It's fine. I just, <sighs> oh, I just, no. it just, I didn't want to become me going, oh, Hamilton here he is being <laughs> here he's being down on something. <laughs> no, because I I do think it's true. So Mycelia, yeah. this sort of realm yeah. of of where the Mykonids are, this sort of this the god of the Mykonids, which I mm. believe you pronounce. Uh, uh, silo, uh, silo fear. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, sorry. What I quite like about I it is that it's that <laughs> you, you trust me. It's a huge sort of cavern with all these spores in it. There's like, uh, all, you know, everywhere you walk, there's sort of like organic mulch, which then mm. you realise is probably <laughs> um, young mycon. It's about to grow and stuff like that. What I quite like about it is that it is underneath a cog. Which is something we didn't mm. sort of really cover is that both sides of a cog can be ha uh, habitable because the gravity, you can e easily just step over doing like a David Bowie labyrinth sort of style, mm. go underneath, which is quite cool. But, and this is where I do agree with you on this, Hamilton. Um, in order to get to my Scylla, this realm of the spores and to the Myconids, yeah. <laughs> it's a paradox. The idea, if you want to get there, you have to walk away from it and you can only get there when you're not looking for it, which sounds pointless. <laughs> Just, I, I get it. Like, as in, I get it. I get the, I get the, 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 the philosophical idea behind it. It's the conceptual thing. It works, but it also just annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, well, how? Because the only time you're ever going to arrive there is when you don't want to go there. Which yes. then, which is then like, it's a I hassle. Can't, I can't imagine in a in a in a game in a game mm -hmm. why you would want like then what's the point why, of it? Why would you be there? Yeah, I agree. Because what you, you do is like, well, let, we need to get to Regulus, and you start walking towards Regulus, and like, oh, you see this mulchy land. Well, we don't need to go here. We'll keep walking, and you just walk onto Regulus. Do you know what I mean? So like, and then when you're like, oh, I really need a Myconid. Well, you better not think about it. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty, yeah. Yes, yes. Do you know what I mean? Don't, like, think, of a don't think of a Myconid. Damn it! Damn it, exactly. <laughs> You're going to be like, it's just like, I don't know, just sort of, as a game concept, it, I mean, as a concept, it's great for like a story, but for a, mm -hmm. for a, a game, I don't know. I'm being I'm being a contrarian. I guess, or whatever. I'm sorry. I guess because, it, it, I don't know, it, it feels like, it goes against this law and order and logic thing. Yes, Cause this is, that's, cause this kind thing. What, that's what sort of, yeah, yeah there is a logic it, to it, but it's not, it's, it, yeah. And it doesn't really come anywhere else. I mean, just quickly looking mm. back through it as well, like they have this whole thing about uh, non-violence. Mm. So, you know, that it would, they're trying to keep out those people who are too turbulent to understand what Mycela my offers. Mm. Um, so there can't be any violence. Anyone that in entertains violent thoughts can find themselves transported away across yeah. mechanisms without their companions. So that's terrifying because obviously you're thinking to yourself like, um, yeah. you know, don't trust what's going on here. But, don't like the mulch. Well, this oh, is God, why I don't want to get I? into this because now I'm going to say that the whole time you're nearly getting poisons and they want to kill you. So like, yes. I don't under quite. I it, it does. It that's when it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> getting in my Hamilton. This is the voice that I do when I'm really annoyed. It's like, well, and I'm doing this with my hands. It's like, if it's not a violent place, but they are when you're there, it's constantly trying to kill you, so, and then they're going to absorb your body in a mm. non-violent way. I I'm, I don't know. I find it pulls down. <laughs> it pulls maybe down. It's, again, Mike and it's, it's that idea that there's there's certain order, the life decay I get stuff. It. No, I do. Maybe yeah. I, know, I know. I get there's a law, there's an order to life and death, but then they're not. But then oh, if we're going to get into it, uh, they are Hamilton. enforcing this death <laughs> prematurely by poisoning you constantly. So. I, Oh, yeah, I love sorry. the fact that you would not survive Mechanus. <laughs> That's what I've discovered about this. Well, I'd just be there arguing, saying, excuse me. <laughs> and then you get transported, you know, across Mechanus, and then eventually when you want to... I've just like, become sort of that person, back, actually, actually. Actually, 
but then but then you probably get judged by the circle so these nine sort of myconoid kings yeah. uh, which if they find you guilty sends, sentence you to a horrible rotting death yeah like, no, well, exactly. this is not fair <laughs> no that's what i mean this is like i would just be the whole time just be saying well this just doesn't fit the logic so like <laughs> anyway so yeah, the point no. is the problem is now i don't want to go there i'm going to be the person that's going to end up there that's the thing isn't it I like, but again, there's, so talk about the spores thing as well, because obviously, again, the the reason they sort of talk about this is the idea that machinids are like, they spray spores towards people to like induce a rapport and to be able to speak a common mm. language, because traditionally, machinids, they, they can mm. only speak sort of telepathically through the spores. But obviously, all, as we sort of mentioned, mechan on Mechanus, you, everyone has a shared, at least a shared language, eh? everyone can understand each other, so you're like... <laughs> What's the? It, it looks like a threat, right? Suddenly, yeah. these, these sports can be like, "What's going on?" They go, "Oh, we can speak. Hello, that's okay." Yeah. Like, yeah no, we've always been able to do this. I don't trust this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. So it's it's really good. I like it. <laughs> it's really good. It's irritating. I really good. no, but I I think it's it is what you take me. I definitely would no, try I'm and make good. it a bit more ordered perhaps. I think I would get rid of that sort of like to get to it, walk away because you're right. Cause otherwise. You're just always going to get stuck there every time, or yeah. always. It's, it's you want players to want to enjoy that that realm, I think. But then, yeah, I, I mean, like I said, it's in, it's I, I I quite like the description of it. I quite like, mm. yeah. I, I guess like, unless like the Mike and the Kins, like they the, like the gods want you to actually go and like help them in some way. Other than that, yeah. like you said, like. Well, I get the whole, like, the whole, there's a lot of theories, like, if it was something more like, you know, there's a fantastic treasure, but you don't get it until you need it and not by wanting it. Like, I totally mm. get that theory and that mm. concept or the sort of, like, you know, things only appear to you when you're not thinking of it and stuff like that. And I kind of, that's fine to a certain extent. And, but it's not like once you're there... It's a, mm. it's like a fabulous place to be. Like, do you know what I mean? So, it, yeah. it's not like it's um, there's a desire to be there in the first no. place. That's kind of what no. I'm missing. I guess. No, that's fair. Well, let's talk about the other town it sort of mentions, which yeah. a town again. I've tried to say it off <laughs> off camera and still probably won't get it right. So, Delon Estin Oti. I think that's how we pronounce it. I think that's it. what we're going with. That's what we're going okay. with. Let's go into it. Delon Estin Oti. So this idea is like a, a, a spiderweb town where all the citizens have learnt to anticipate the flow of time, mm. and the all the conversations have been sort of already based on what has happened before, to the point where people, majority of the citizens, don't speak at all. Uh, they just they, they just realise that everything has an order, things have passed, and they can sort of almost predict the future in a way they offer services for for everyone so that they can predict certainly for neutrals what the, what's going to happen for the rest of the day for sort of lawfuls and, and goods within mm. the next couple of days and then oh sorry within the next hour or so and then chaotics are like oh, no chance no, <laughs> no we don't know yeah. but what I, what I quite liked about it is that they have obviously the most most of them are non-talkers but there are people who translate for them, the actual talkers, including like the sort of leader of the town who has a great catchphrase going, I knew you would do that, which I think I'm just going to use that all the time. <laughs> it's like, of course you do that. I predicted this. Like, no, you didn't. I knew you were going to say that too, because <laughs> you didn't believe me. No, I know. Yeah. I the whole I knew you'd do that would be so annoying, wouldn't it? <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. And this idea of the, the it's almost quite sad in a way that the those who are doing sort of who aren't talking but are predicting the patterns are sort of translating are being translated by those who can talk but as a result you might not understand the fortune in quotation yeah. marks that you get because the talkers are still like one degree or so away from them so there's almost this sort of schis schism within mm. the towns about themselves that they don't trust those you know it is it, you actually don't talk to each other you, it, it's not the same because those yeah. people who can talk aren't ord as ordered as the mm. non-talkers so i just thought that was quite cool there was a description of that which also lies on that concept of those who know don't speak and those who speak don't know sort of theory Whoa. doesn't it yeah definitely. That, that, i think they're sort of playing with a lot of those concepts of like knowledge and sort of theories on knowledge i also mm. um yeah and i thought it, <laughs> there was a sort of it was quite sad the idea that the people who are who can talk are alienated from both parties, and therefore, I didn't. Uh, the, that's kind of, um, and the, yeah, because the communication as well was, they because they know each other so well. The ones that don't talk, it's that communication with just the simple like they might just stand there and go, 
and then walk away. And that's yeah. the whole conversation because they know what they're yeah. anticipating, but purely the raised eyebrow <laughs> explains exactly the so sentiment much. that needs to yeah, be said. Everything. And that's yeah. it. And that's all that is needed to have an addendum to their already knowledge, you know, to push them in the right direction of thought. So I think that was quite fun. Um, yeah. And the, the, the architecture of it is like, yeah, symmetrical, as you said, with a spider web sort of pattern radiating yeah. out from a centre, which I think is... Um, quite interesting and that all buildings are residential because and there's no inn or hostel um yeah. and the only way you could ever stay there is in someone's house where they've moved or died so you there's like free houses that you can use there but because there's no need for sort of like shops or anything like that there's no need for commerce so they literally have enough food that they mm. give to everyone and it's all very you know laid out like that so it's kind of, kind of weird. yeah it's pretty, yeah, pretty weird. And I guess the, the final one we'll go on to before we talk about Regulus, really. We might have mentioned it last episode, but the, mm. the third layer of Arcadia is, mm. is, is here. So we sort of mentioned about last time that this, this third layer was sort of uh, been transnegated over to mm. Mechanus, uh, Nemaustus, I think we, we decided on that uh, Nemaustus. pronunciation. Nemaustus. Nemaustus. Um, There's no T and, in it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, that's how I. <laughs> Nemaustus. I don't know. I'm Nemaustus. I don't know. It, this, this, the third layer of Arcadia. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's interesting because obviously it was such a big deal about it made in the Arcadia um, book that we read mm. that here it's actually quite. There's not much in, in mm. this third layer. It's very woody compared to mm. the rest of it. I think that's the thing. Obviously, all the other cogs it's all sort of like very shiny very there's no sort of there's no natural creatures here so instantly it means it feels like to me there isn't any maybe natural environment per se there's no like lakes or trees or anything like that whereas here in this particular realm there it is woody and you still have those pe sort of petitioners those certain people who, was, who did come from arcadia and happen to end up here they're still suspicious of you mm. um this that's still sort of the sort of after effect from arcadia yeah. sort of bleeding through but doesn't that there's no sort of um towns per se or anything like because they are just trying to protect this layer now they're like well we've got it now yeah we're gonna make sure the those the the harmonium won't come and take it back so it's almost it is like a feel very much like a no man's land type scenario where mm. it's 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 beautiful and lush but there's not much here yeah and what i quite like is that they've taken on and there's a, i think there's something you could play with it because it's already moved once and then and then they're saying the Arcadian petitions on the plane, they have learned something of chaos and hatred for those who restrain the good in them. Mm. Because obviously, like, so they've sort of, instead of like, because they're good, they've got the good alignment whilst this is a neutral alignment. They've also then, as a reaction, are taking more of a chaotic alignment to sort of re, to like try and maintain their good and mm. go against the ultimate lawfulness of it. And, um, and so they've employed chaos attacks, which are like another faction who are just all mm. about chaos, just like to, to make the warrens and stuff, so they can hide away from the governors who are trying to keep it in in Mechanus. Mm. And um, what I quite like is there's someone that's trying to stop them being too chaotic because then it might then shift to to somewhere like um, a chaotic uh, a chaotic good place, like a Borea yeah. or even or something like that, which would be kind of you could do as like a like you could have a whole thing that it's becoming more chaotic and it's starting to shift and you're starting to mm. see like uh what's those what are the roving bands from Aboria called the um the uh the, the big parties the big party yeah the oh. dithyram oh what are they called i don't know they're, they're everywhere though <laughs> i think we've talked about them in every episode since then <laughs> yes we have what, what are they Great. called i can't uh. remember off the top of my head but yes i like that yeah. idea yeah and then this... they sort of maybe you see one of them on the horizon and it's like oh no it's being transported to arcadia at uh, arborea oh, or something God. like that and it would be i don't know it could be kind of i like yeah I, again that cool story of like what yeah following regulus around uh, not regular sorry following the mouse dust around just like yeah. it bumps from plane to plane to plane because it doesn't necessarily fit back in and eventually yes. if it gets back up to uh, arcadia it's like ah oh, home again or something yeah. like that i don't know maybe that's like uh, a, like the whole game is like you're like moving the, you're like you what you oh what if you like yeah you try and you get stuck in a plane here's an idea mm -hmm. right you've heard this okay. story yeah, and you're stuck in a jail in battle or something like that, mm -hmm. and so it's lawful and evil, and mm. uh, and someone tells you the story of the Maustus, and you're like, wait a minute, everyone, start being really good, <laughs> be really good to each other right now, <laughs> like every like if you can gather like at least fifteen people in this jail, let's all be really good and chaotic. <laughs> 
Okay, just do random things. Mm -hmm. And so then you just have to like convince everyone in this jail to do random things. And suddenly the jail gets transported to a chaotic good plane. And that's your way to escape a jail. Yeah, that's in how hell. you get out. I don't remember that mod in uh, Skyrim. <laughs> How you get out of the jail at the beginning. I think Skyrim. It's a theory. Yeah, I can't remember. It's a theory. I like that. And then finally, the main sort of the main mm. sort of realm, uh, Primus's realm. This idea of of Regulus, this orderly as clockwork and cruelly logical mm. as can be. Love uh, this place. It ha yeah. It's so cool. Again, the image mm. of it's quite cool. It's got 64 cogs sort of stacked like a pyramid with a huge sort of rod in between. Mm. And it's not, it's not sure if the, it's the rod that turns the cogs or the cogs that turn the rod. I just thought that was an interesting little fact. Yeah. And it's just one giant sort of city or realm. So it's, I, again, it's impossibly huge, I think. Mm. And you have, again, that idea of these, the divisions of, of, of modrons. You've got certain modrons looking after different parts of the cogs, so maybe individual cogs and then every four cogs it's another modron that looks over that can overseer etc etc and then right yeah. at the top you have primus which is the sort of the modron deity and the big thing to sort of note about regulus is that there is this uh this building called the modron cathedral which is i it looks spectacular it's almost like it's constantly in motion this idea that all we, it's almost flitted around by little modules as they're adding stuff to it and mm. making it it's, it's almost like what are they building over there yeah. <laughs> it's like just it's getting and it feels like it's impossibly big but it's not and it's and it's, it's just it very can make you go mad that. by looking at it it can yes it has inside of it it's got um an oh uh, yes it, that's even it. Though it, the external of it can make you it says a thing when that you was see. it yes yeah. you were right yes it's the external of it because you just you're trying to comprehend it i guess it's like me in every one of these episodes trying to comprehend something and just like i for me i'm just like you know what it's gone it goes beyond my imagination so i just i will stop imagining it now whereas if it if it sort of overwhelms you drives you to mm. to madness i guess but inside the modron cathedral there is an orrery which is basically like this huge big model of gears which spin and move and you can use it as both a scrying device so again a way to look on maybe what's going on in this realm or what's going on in that realm but also as a teleportation device depending on <laughs> if you're careful with it or not so it talks about various saving throws and stuff that you do to make sure again using it you a don't like lose your sense of self uh, but and also sanity. that you don't <laughs> and sanity yeah uh, and and make sure you don't suddenly teleport yourself to <laughs> somewhere that could be quite dangerous because I can imagine uh, you're, yeah. like, you're on Archeron or you're looking at Archeron going what are they doing and it's suddenly like oh no I seem to be in the middle of a battlefield right now yeah exactly <laughs> damn it <laughs> I didn't quite so, yeah. understand it but it sort of says like when you get somewhere within your eye line at your height so it's like if you're looking down on it it's sort of fine but if you then start looking up and going oh what's over there there. oh fuck and then you're there yeah. it's sort of that's kind of cool. I, I yeah I think for me I would as a DM I would pick my moment like depending on how long and you were looking for perhaps and mm. like you get and like the longer you there the, the details get clearer and clearer so maybe it's only very blurry at the beginning and then yeah. you're hearing a few things and stuff like that and then if you like lean in closer and closer then suddenly you're pop you're at the war table yeah. with the rest of them yeah, you lean you over know. the edge a little bit too far that you lose that balance like losing the balance on your chair and you sort of like oh <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. that yeah that's exactly how i saw it um so yeah so that's sort of the again the huge sort of mm. i think an interesting like defining features and geography for it because they're compared to other planes i think it's only got a select few of interesting things like mm. and i like, guess it's like like okay we've got this and we've got this and mm. actually i think it's very easy to build on from there and, like you don't have to use the mycilla stuff at all or the the mouse dust stuff you can just you use that for something else as well yeah uh, but i was gonna quickly go on to the magical conditions yes that was all right no, yeah. so Ma there are some restrictions on magic. I think every plane of law, instead of the chaos ones, which up the ante essentially, uh, every plane of law just goes, mm, no, <laughs> no, we have rules and orders. Rules here. as written. <laughs> no, don't. What are you trying to do? So stuff like uh, illusionary magic and wild mm. magic are just completely inoperable here. Don't even mm. bother trying it because it's just not going to work. Yeah, um, with uh, conjuring and summoning uh, spells, they will summon creatures that are. I'm quoting from the book here, a perfect slave, but basically we are, are lawful creatures, no matter mm. what you're trying to do. And it has a very interesting sort of rule, which I think could be quite tricky, but I guess as long as you, as a DM, just keep in your head. So if you are a the opposite alignment spellcasters, so for example, you are a chaotic uh, uh, spellcaster, 
the the lawful creature that you've summoned will only follow what you've asked it to do to the letter of it. So it's not gonna and it's not gonna interpret. You know, you have to be careful what you say because it's just gonna do exactly mm. what you say. So. Um, if you are of a similar alignment, there'll be some interpretation. It will like genuinely sort of, oh, I see what you said this, but you meant this a little bit. Okay, I can help you in that way. But if you are the same, if you are both of you are lawful, the creature will then ask you what are your exact intentions, <laughs> which I love. It so feels like a like an email you send. Sorry, could you just explain what you meant by that? Yeah, I just I just I just got your email. Could you just just can we have a quick check call about this? Just yeah, can we have a quick team chat to, uh, to yes. make sure. Yeah. yeah, on the same page, on the same page. So I, I, I think that's it's a, again maybe you might get lost in the the big sort of combat per se. But I quite like the idea that definitely chaotics. You'll have to be like, <laughs> your players are like, okay, I need you to go over there mm. and kill that person with your sword, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then come back to me, or, or like they've got the scroll. I need you to get the scroll. Without killing the, you know, and just like. And just, the scroll uh, is the one in their bag that says yes, this, that's this, coloured in this lettering, yes. and you know. Just like, get get their bag. No, the the, the big bag, the the one with the backpack that says "I heart paladins" or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've met um, that paladin. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love Paris. <laughs> yeah. Um, divination magic. Um, again, it just says if it's cast by a chaotic alignment creature, then it will have no effect. But l mm. lawful alignments, it will have effect. And here, and it is the interesting one: necromancy. The necromancy is seen on the as again a basic violation mm. of law. And I think this has happened on the other planes as well. I will say, mm. and, but even healing magic doesn't work too well here. It talks about this idea that. But healing magic to work, you, it requires a piece of the caster's flesh, mm. or yeah, you know, I, I would, I would maybe because mm. it, it's not like just I'll just lop off a hand and you get five hit points back. It's not that per se, but like it is, it is using your life force yeah. to sort of move your life force into something else. So when you're casting something at a spell level, you know, like a healing spell or a necromatic spell, sorry, uh, to bring something to life, it has to require some of your hit points. And there's a ratio it gives in the in the yes. in the book. Which is I think it's really interesting. I don't think it mm. I don't really know if D and D fifth edition does that per se. Like like it have like if you want to do this at this level, do that. It's because it's not necessarily a yeah. Optional rule that comes. We'll talk about op the optional rule for mechanics. The thing is closer to is the blood hunter kind of thing. That's kind of what yeah. it reminds me of a little bit. But other than that, yeah, I can't think of anything like level wise. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, this idea of, of channeling your energy into yeah. one thing to another. Like I, I guess we talked recently about um, heroes of Kryn, this sort of UA on our on our sibling podcast, and that mm. talks about like um, this idea that use you expending some of your hit die. To, to help other people and stuff like that. But this is actually your hit points. So yeah, it's like it's actual... Yeah. Cur your current life rather than something in the future you may or may not use. Yeah, that's true. Stuff. Um, yeah. I think the other one then about elemental magic, it requires mm. the things, the component you need to add to it is the element you want to draw. So you can breathe onto your hand, you can, uh, you know, get some, you know, for water, you could get a droplet of tears or something like that or mm -hmm. uh and then or you can make it and for dirt it could just be a handful of dirt or like dust in your pockets or you could as a dm as it said make that more of a a trek like you need a pound of earth so you've got to get to them to mouse us to get some earth because there's nowhere else like or... for god's sake <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and that sort of thing which i think is kind of and spray a bit of water uh mm -hmm. on your hands i think yeah it's kind of I don't know, just a little like nod to it and stuff. Yeah. And the spell keys are cool as well. Yeah. Yes, the spell, spell and power keys are all sort of cogged themed and sort of interlinked mm. in some way. Again, I bet they would look, again, to describe them would be very cool. Remind me a little bit, and I, I don't know if you've seen the TV show or read the comics, but the Lock and Key series, which has. I started it. The, I started it. I haven't, yeah. 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 I, well, you, that's all you need to know is like this idea that there are these keys that unlock certain things, and they just mm. they look so different and weird. And that's mm. what I had in my head is that they just all, again, the all different kind of cogs and stuff, and how they all fit together with those spell and power keys, which is very interesting. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, cool. The one thing I did want to quickly mention before sort of mm. maybe rounding it off really is um, I want to talk about the. Oh, and I'm going to say this wrong as, as well. 
Uh, the labyrinthian, labyrinthian yes. portal. Yes. I kind of missed this a little bit. So there's two things to this. So there's obviously uh, there's the gatehouse that get in to the automata uh, gatehouse outside of the portal town. But mm -hmm. there's also the labyrinthian portal, which is this maze of portals and conduits that sort of link the cogs together. This idea mm -hmm. and how you would get from one to another. Because again, this whole plane, this whole realm is just cogs that are all sort of together and you can walk on them, etc. So I guess if you wanted to take a shortcut, you would use this portal. But it's it describes it as sort of a... It's not really a maze maze, as we would know it. It's sort of a mental construct that you have to be sort of like focused in on trying to get somewhere. It's almost like... Again, I know we've made the joke before about it having it being like the Windows screensaver sort of um, maze, but I think this one is even worse. Like, because it's in your own head, yeah. it's your mind palace, but you've you've locked yourself out and you can't remember the passcode. Um, but it's interesting because it talks about only modrons and other similarly minded creatures can use this labyrinth with very with certainty. So, you, if yeah. you need to get to the next one, you might need to get a guide in to help mm. you. Maybe um, somehow. Get a get a modron to help you, maybe a rogue one to get you. If you or if you need to get higher up into Regulus to go, maybe go visit the Modron Cathedral, or maybe I don't know, try and seek an audience with Primus. Get get one of the modrons to try and get you in. Would be uh, yeah. an interesting one, I think. Yeah, no, I think it's quite cool, and I think you could yeah you could work it in in game in some interesting ways. But I yeah I kind of imagined it like. <sighs> bit like sort of like um you know that shape when you drop it and it always falls and into its in it always writes itself and it's like a weird have you ever seen one it's like the object that wherever you leave it it like will write itself upwards it's, it's like yeah like it's um, got a curved bottom and then got like some weird triangles and sort of edges and it always yes. lands facing upwards mm. i imagine it's like an like a ethereal version of that object <laughs> that you can kind of see and then you kind of got to walk into it at an angle that you want to achieve so it's like multi-headed mm. but not completely regular but it doesn't look regular but it's regular and it's sort of something that's kind of mm. how i imagined it as something like that and then you enter into it like as an object that's huge that you find and then the way you the way you trans Traverse it is how you then yeah. end up in the next place or something. But... I you see now. Now I've got two images. One of that sort of Alice in Wonderland sort of like the drink me. So you know you go further away. There's a smaller door, but then you get closer and it's yeah. a bigger door to the same size. But yeah. now I also think that every time you're like in the the labyrinth and portal, it's like okay, so we need to go away from the door. Oh god damn it, we're back at Mycilla again. <laughs> like, <laughs> Every dead end, you end up at Mycilla. <laughs> like, no! No, that's what... Now I, I next like time, it. Now I like yeah, it if it does that. Actually, too, it will just it. constantly appears up like, hello. <laughs> like, um, some malt. No, I don't want no, any malt. Just leave no, me alone. I, stop introducing me to your cousins. I don't want to know. Um, so, yeah. So, I kind of just wanted to finish off. So, I want to talk about it from the DM's guide. Uh, the, yes. So, I want to talk about it from the DM's guide sort of uh, view. So, in the 5th edition, as I've sort of always mentioned, is that it's very, very limited on what we have here compared to the Planescape books. Mm. So, here, the optional rule, there's two of them for this plane, which I, I, really, I, really, love, uh, I really love the first one. So, the optional rule, the first one is Law of Averages. So oh whilst, yeah, I, while on I thought that was actually in this, to be honest. I so. yeah, I thought it would be too, but and I guess they, it feels like they missed a trick by not. But but yeah. who knows? While on Makana's creatures always use the average damage result for attacks and spells. For example, an attack that normally deals one d ten plus five damage always deals ten damage on Makana's, hmm. which oh, again it. if if. For whatever reason, they do get into a fight, which I think it would be so silly if they did, <laughs> because yeah. you know, because they're instantly going to be arrested by the Modrons and then taken to Regulus for trial. But this idea, is like, okay, um, oh yeah, you you hit. No, wait, what's the av what's the average? Cool, you do that. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just it's great. It's, that's all it is. No, and it just like gets rid of those beautiful crits easily. <laughs> <laughs> wait, does a crit not give you double average? I guess I I would just always oh. give it. Average. Oh, you'd always give it average. That's evil. I would. That's I, evil. That's the evil no, Fiona coming no, out there. No, no. <laughs> I think you'll find that is the that is the neutral way of doing things. <laughs> I need that's glasses for this episode. Yeah, I've got my glasses on, especially for actually. this episode. <laughs> well, actually, the uh, the other optional rule is called imposing order. So at the end of each long rest that's taken on the plane of Macanus, 
and a visitor who isn't lawful neutral must make a DC 10 wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature's alignment changes to lawful neutral. Well, that happens on other planes in Planescape with the chaos, doesn't it? So I think that's a fair shout as well, to be honest. I think, but this, it is a fair shout, but I think it's because it goes, it's rather than just being changes to chaotic or yeah. changes to good, this one is like, lawful neutral it's like yeah, vroom, the, yeah like, it is a big one reset. that's what it is yeah. uh, but just to say obviously the, the creature's alignment does revert to normal after one day spent on another plane other than the Carnus, and casting the spell evil and good spell on the creature also restores its original alignment so it it totally makes sense i guess like mm. I, I i i think i feel like the wisdom saving throw is low but then of course maybe you, you don't you know it's funny when what it's kind of funny when someone it. becomes yeah the data character it's yeah 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 pretty much a data character from star trek um mm. but it and it, i guess it adds for some role play as well mm. I, I can, but i i do like the idea that if everyone fails their role that they all have to like well um yeah because then they can't, <laughs> you know, go well we must report this crime to someone well we normally go and solve it no we cannot solve it we must ask for help we must get the we must get the proper accreditation before we can we then must, go and solve this but so t t tell you what friends we will go and follow the person say you are a criminal over and over again you have not washed your hands and <laughs> just follow them out <laughs> oh, oh dear <laughs> No, I think that'd be fun. I think that'd be hilarious if they all did. I like both of those optional rules and I would use them. But yeah. I think I wanted to, on the note of like Makana said, like I really enjoyed reading this one. Yes. I really enjoyed like the story of it and the mm. sort of places of it. But, mm -hmm. and I said that to you, I said like, oh, I've been really enjoying it. But when it came to like thinking about how I would use it is where I sort of like, I weirdly just unlike others didn't, I found that surprisingly didn't find it as exciting yeah. in in a sense, yeah. which I thought was weird because I, I did enjoy all the, the concepts and the sort of like the the places and the mag the mystic mystery the sort of uh, otherness of it. You know, the yes. sort of like everything being on these cogs sounds really cool and it, like it would look really cool, but I wasn't then like, yeah, I want to write an adventure for here, like uh, unlike other places. Uh, again, well. I was a bit like that with. Uh, Arcadia as well, weirdly. Again, enjoyed reading it a lot. Really loved the world building, but wasn't like I need to Sucks go here. It. And well, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm just evil. I don't know. No, no, no. I think you're fair. I think, like, why would you go to Makarnas when Makarnas mm. can come to you? Yes. And what I mean by that is yes. the, the Great Modron March, which yeah. was uh, an adventure book that came out, second edition, uh, written by Monty Cook, which again, mm. we talked about a little bit in the Modron episode we did for DM's Book Club, mm. but this idea that, um, well, in the Planescape book, every 17 years, but in the the Great Mo Mo Modron March adventure book, every like 200 and something years. Yeah, which oh. I thought was, yeah, because I thought that, and when I read it in here, it was said 17, <laughs> I was like, I'm sure it's longer, but I think I only knew of the, the March from the book. The one you said the yeah. Three one. yeah exactly so regardless every mm. cycle of the big cogs in mechanism want to do one big turn for some reason the armies the modron armies go and do a huge big march across all the cosmology wheel all mm. and visit all the planes and of course they don't stop for anything they're like lemmings essentially they mm. just keep going forward so that nice Not new town <laughs> yeah you, that nice new town you just built, I'm so sorry, it's being mulled over by all these Modrons just walking, <laughs> carrying on, because they don't stop for anything. They're following yeah. this certain path, never changing. Um, Bacchus, so I... that was the name of the Arcadia people. <laughs> there we go, there you go. Because that's what it reminded me of, they're like a Bacchus in a sense. Yeah, they're like yeah. An, un, yeah, an unfeeling, no, mm. no, no drinking on the job. Yeah, not an extreme <laughs> version of the Bacchus, which is like they have no care and want to oh, like yes. destroy everything they just they will just keep walking because you're in the way sort of thing exactly yeah. yeah it's just an unending thing and of course you know all the different kinds of modrons are there it and it's great and in the great modron march i will quickly mention what the big sort of adventure hook is that you know it's they it tells you all the planes that the the modron army visits in order so you could easily if you're going through the planes in general be like oh by the way there's a there's a march behind you and you look and you're like and it's just you describe the feature so it doesn't have to be something like that's in the foreground it's something like oh by the way you notice there's the last few dregs of a couple of monodromes running to catch up and you're like oh shit it's that it's that march we saw we saw back in our, our care on mm. uh, you know mm. and have that sort of in the background the the big reason i sort of mentioned it is because in the great module march of the adventure it's happened early 
and mm-hmm. and the, everyone's just cleaning up after the last one. You're like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> fuck off! <laughs> you see the Motorons carrying on, like mm. carrying on, and it obviously causing destruction. So that that could be the thing is that you have this basically intergalactic police force mm. invading the planes again, and you know you're like, well, should we go investigate what's going on? And so that is another reason to go and find that out is, why they've set yeah. up early for that. But I think it I think it's more fun to bring that Mechanus out into I other think planes. So as well, Modrons right. in battle sounds much more fun than you with Modrons in in you know taking and like having a, a rogue Modron or a semi like it's rogue but it still holds so much of its character mm-hmm. as an NPC like a part like yeah. a DMPC. Yeah. Perfect. Want one. You know like I want <laughs> to have one. <laughs> want one. <laughs> Definitely. And, it, yeah. and that's the thing about it. And like, and then taking that DMPC to back to to Macarnas and it involving it again, great fun. It just, yeah, I think it's just like pandemonium. It's like, I want to go there. I want to go to Windglum. I want to meet all these kind of these kind of kooky characters and these kind of crazy things where you shout into the wind. And I think players would really enjoy that. And mm. I think that I think, but maybe. Maybe it's just because I am a chaotic person, generally, DM-wise, that probably that's probably why I, I lean more to them, and that's probably... No, I don't think so. I, I, I definitely see. I think in Makarnas, as my big thing, because I, I too, I think it's a really interesting thing, I wouldn't base any more than maybe one session there. Yeah. Like, I think the players will go, hand in their bounty, or get captured by Modron, mm. have their big sort of trial, etc., and then they have to break out. They're going to have to leave and be barred from... Macarnas yeah. in some way. I think it's the little fleeting glimpse because, as we've sort of said, Modrons, you don't know where you stand with them. So yeah. actually, going to Macarnas is probably the worst thing that can happen because you're going to be stuck with all this bureaucracy and paperwork. And let's face it, no adventurer, no matter how chaotic or how lawful they are, wants to be stuck doing paperwork. No, I mean no. even I mean even doing a, a, the character sheet is hard enough. Let us know yes. more. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Well, there you go, Hamilton. We have gone yeah. through the various paperwork mm. and the cogs, and Makarnas continues to slowly tick on as well. And again, in my head, I like the idea that when you are on Makarnas, even though it doesn't say anywhere, that there's a, like there's like a sound, that sort of background white noise of sort of ticking slowly and surely with the cogs moving. Just time. reminds me of my grandparents' house. It reminds me of my parents' house because there's a lot of clocks there. There's always clocks. Yeah, exactly. There's That's always it. Always clocks. Well, Hamilton, what is the next plane we're visiting? We're saying goodbye to the, the Modrons. We've, we've yep. given our paperwork. We've given our license. We can leave. <laughs> we can leave now, can we? <laughs> we can leave now. Where is our next plane? Where adventure? are we going next? Well, we are going to the splendor of Mount <gasps> Celestia. Ooh. 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 That is our lawful good good. So our ultimate good and lawful plane. Um, mm. It is a huge... N- near infinitely tall mountain that has multiple layers as you ascend so the layers unlike a lot of the layers where it's distance or it's like descending you know this is a rising this is ascendancy Ooh. as in you know in french that they have uh, you descend the stairs but you don't ascend ascend the stairs only use the word ascend for when jesus rose t- to heaven I think this is kind of the only time in French that you would also be able to use Assange because it is the a godly ascent upon a, a, a mountain top. Wow, well, je ne sais it? pas. <laughs> je ne sais yes. Quoi? <laughs> Quoi? Encore <laughs> un fois. And... Uh... <laughs> Yes. La Biblioteca. Yes, I know. I How exciting. So Mount Celestia, I guess because when we started this podcast, we obviously looked at the abyss, which the, the infinite layers of chaos. Yeah. And I always imagine, when we, I've said this before, I think right at the beginning, this idea that for me, when I think of layers, I think of cakes, this horrible idea of like an infinite cake of chaos. And now mm. an infinite cake of of goodness and, and I can just imagine it being even sickly. Just more sickly yeah oh yeah you know what I'm just tasting you know when you get those big chunks of icing you know like you go into a cake yeah and you think oh it's gonna have the a cream. good balance and it's like mm. too and it's like well it's like yeah too sweet frangipan blech, muck yes yeah so it's, but anyway it's gonna... we are gonna meet cool dragon we're gonna meet a cool dragon so wow. Well there then, that, that'll take that'll take the sweetness off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. Then, so. Well, that sounds really exciting. I honestly can't wait to well traverse or ascend yeah. Mount Celestia. But until then, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and catch up on all the previous episodes and vods of this show and our sibling show, the DMs Book Club. I'm sure there will be some links popping up at the end here. 
And until next time, uh, make sure you follow all the laws and mm. see you on the flip side. See you on the flip side. <laughs> Bye! Bye. <laughs>